Cranes are fascinating and mysterious. In my book, I tell you how I was able to decipher some of their secrets in Asia and in North America, but first in Europe. On the island of Hokkaido in Japan, I listened to the calls of red-crowned cranes. With my new method, I was able to recognize the cranes individually. I learned many different vocalizations with different meanings. In North America, I listened to the Canada cranes and then even more intensively to the whooping cranes. I succeeded for the first time worldwide in recording unison calls and many other vocalizations of the then last wild population in their habitat. On several expeditions, I researched the behavior of whooping cranes and their communication. I used the best recordings in an incredibly complex endangered species recovery project. Using six different vocalizations, we trained young cranes raised in captivity to fly behind an ultralight aircraft from Wisconsin to Florida. Thus, they learned the migration route as used by the extinct former population. With my call recordings, the young cranes were led to the south and became wild there. For 15 years, many whooping crane youngsters learned their way in the migration school by Operation Migration. My research began with Eurasian cranes. With their beautiful dances, they flirt until both are ready to mate. Copulation lasts only a few seconds, very short compared to the frequent and long dancing mating ritual. Most of the life of cranes happens in secret. I had the desire to reveal some of these secrets. Cranes also communicate with each other during flight. There are supposed to be cranes here, but where are they? Oh, way back there. How can I get to know them better then? I also managed to record and interpret many other vocalizations. In my backpack, I have a power supply and amplifier for the microphone. In my left hand, a digital recording device connected to the amplifier. This is a very rare observation. A crane chick hatches from the egg. Unless you are a wildlife filmmaker with a hide at the nest, you cannot experience something like this. But even the filmmaker cannot know if this pair was also together last year. It is believed that crane pairs are bound together for life. But is this even true? One parent brings his chick, a comparatively huge grasshopper. 
After a few tries, the little one manages to swallow it, but it's still stuck in its throat for a while. Normally, crane parents leave the nest with their chicks soon after hatching. But one pair did not. I was worried. But it was unnecessary, because the crane pair waited until the young were turkey-sized and could walk through a wooded area with a lot of undergrowth. This and many other surprising findings about the life of cranes, their intelligence, their communication, their relationships, I tell you in my book. I developed a method of using frequency spectra of the calls to get to know who is who. The first spectrum here belongs to pair number one near my house last year. The second spectrum shows a call of the same pair from this year. The pattern of the spectrum is the same. Then you see here completely different spectra of calls of different pairs. This way I can also tell if the pairs stay together in the following years. In the book I tell you what I learned this way about the cranes in our world. It took me a very long time to figure out. Cranes agree with each other with very quiet sounds that they want to take off and that they want to take off together. Cranes have many different vocalizations when communicating. These here are sounds with which one crane seems to be telling the others something. I explain in the book what these are about. From the first observations that surprise me, and then the analysis of crane calls and other vocalizations, I came to many insights about cranes around the world and was able to contribute to the species rescue project Whooping Cranes. All this can be found in my book narrated in a light and accessible way.